Hi. Yeah. Hi, how you doing? Good, how are you? Good. So, hey, sorry again for, for missing these comments on uh, on Facebook and not getting back to you. I did completely overlook it, and uh, I apologize. I'm, I'm terrible at using Facebook as a communication device, and so... So I'm sorry that, I, that you had to get that out and that I didn't communicate with you better there. Uh, oh, hey, no worries at all. I know you're busy, and uh, it's no big deal. Uh, but I do appreciate you giving me the time today to uh, actually do this interview. Um, yep. So, uh, anyways, but I'm the beat, the Colorado beat writer for In La Crosse We Trust, and uh, so um, I'd like to start this interview out with uh, saying that I'm talking with Ken Clawson from the Denver Outlaws, sixth-round draft pick in the supplemental draft on December 11th. Um, happy to have you back with the Outlaws. Um, looking Thank forward, you. looking forward to seeing you play this season. Um, why don't you tell me a little bit about uh, what prompted you uh, to pick lacrosse as the sport of choice, and how long have you been playing? Yeah, yeah. So, um, so I started playing lacrosse in in sixth grade. And, uh, you know, I grew up playing football, played football my whole life, started playing in, in first grade, and, and so had a, had a liking for the, you know, the physical nature uh, of football and, and, and obviously what I was able to see in lacrosse. And honestly, I started playing lacrosse because I was absolutely horrible at baseball. <laughs> um, couldn't, couldn't hit the ball to, to save my life. And so uh, decided that after a, uh, after a one-hit season, it was about time to, to switch sports and and uh, and so yeah, picked up pick up lacrosse stick. I played my first year as a goalie actually, um, and that uh, that did not uh, go as well as I would have liked. I was not the best at stopping the ball, but uh, was able to to get out of the cage and, and hit some people. And so after my first season in sixth grade, the the coach put a put a defensive stick in my hands and. Uh, and from seventh grade on, was playing defense in uh, in lacrosse. Well, that's that's sweet. I know my son started playing in sixth grade, and he just adores the sport. Um, so uh, you uh, predominantly play close defense, but uh, have you? I noticed that uh, when I was talking with Chris Spangler, the uh, new strength and conditioning coach for you guys, um, that he said that in the DU Outlaws game that you had played some LSM. Um, which of the two do you prefer? I mean, do you prefer more um, defense or LSM? You know, uh, I've always played uh, close defense has always been my 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 main position. Um, but even in college, I would you know for for certain games or, or certain situations, I'd I'd either bump up on the wings and play some long stick or jump up and we might have thrown two poles on a on a team and tried to throw them off that way. So so long stick's always kind of been uh, you know I've always enjoyed the, the, the ability to be able to kind of play both and, and, and play close or long stick. I think that long stick is definitely more offensive. Uh, you know, you have some more offensive opportunities. I think especially as of late, you know, that's really progressed in the, in the game. You see more of these long stick players uh, with an offensive mindset and, and make it to things happen down the field. Um, close defense, I, I like in the sense that uh, you never leave the field. You know, I don't like... I'm missing an opportunity to to make a play or or having to come off the field or things of that like that. So so I, you know I like both. They both have uh, certain certain you know characteristics or unique kind of opportunities that they each present. Um, but uh, you know I think heading into the season, I think that honestly for me after after so many injuries, I, I just want to be able to to, to crack a roster and 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 be able to to help the outlaws in, in whatever way I can if if that happens to be a long stick. I'd be happy to do it if, if that happens to be a close stick. Um, you know, I'd be happy to do that as or a close defense. You know, I'd, I'd, I'd be happy to do that as well. I, I'm really couldn't be happier to, to be back on the field and or to be back on the roster and, and have the ability to to, to kind of get out there and, and make some things happen. And so, uh, wherever wherever I can help the team um, best succeed, you know, I'll I'll, I'll go there in a, in a second and uh, and do my best there. Okay, now. Uh, are you a righty or a lefty? Because I looked uh, at all your stats. I've read so many stats about you when I before I wrote that article for In Lacrosse We Trust, and I can't find anywhere where it tells if you're a lefty or a righty. Yeah, I'm a I'm a right-handed. Okay, so, all right. So uh, not a yeah, not a lefty. Okay. Uh, so uh, which side do you prefer the offensive player to be on? I mean, what do you feel is your strongest side as far as um, being a defender? Um, well, you know, I think it's uh, I think it's kind of 
I guess it depends. You know, uh, normally a lot of times when you're playing close defense, um, they'll stick right-handed defenders on the left-handed attackman. Uh, that way, my stick's always in front of the guy. I can I can really disrupt him and try and cause uh, cause some problems in that in that regard. Uh, I don't really have a preference in terms of what side you know I'm on. I feel like I can make it work on on any of the sides. Uh, I think in terms of in terms of, you know, one of the things that I like to do as a defenseman is, is to take the ball away and, and to strip strip the, the offensive guy with the ball. For me, that, that a lot of times is, is having a guy in the right hand. When he's in his right hand, I, you know, I have the ability to throw some more checks and, and uh, make some things happen. So, you know, it kind of depends on the situation of, of where I'm trying to, what we're trying to do, but... But, you know, I, I really don't have a preference. I've been able to play on the crease or play the, the guy at X, play the left wing, right wing, you know. Whoever may be, I, I, you know, I, I feel pretty comfortable going. Um, you know, I've never, even, even in college, it was more matchup-based uh, rather than position-based. You know, they, they put us on the guy that we felt we could do best. To I've never really tried or never really had to solidify myself on kind of one edge or the other, um, rather just focused on you know, the, the, the person that I was covering. Okay. All right. So tell me, when you, how did you first injure your knee? Um, and what actual injury did you sustain? Yeah, so so I injured my knee. Uh, I first injured my knee in December of uh, 2010, uh, so about three years ago at, at Mammoth, uh, with the car to Mammoth. And so it was our, it was our first indoor scrimmage. Um and uh, our first scrimmage for the for the season, and yeah, within you know, got in and, and tore my ACL um, in the first scrimmage, and so I blew my knee out. Yeah, December 2010, I tore my knee with the the, the mammoth, and then I had surgery. And about seven months later, in in July, maybe end of June, uh, early July, right around that time period, I tore my ACL again with the Outlaws oh, at the. At, my first practice back, um, tore my knee again, and then had surgery. And uh, about four months later, back in December, so a year from my original tear, uh, was at a clinic and uh, coaching, and and blew my knee out, tore my ACL for a third time. Wow! Three times in a year, and then uh, had you know had a had a, another surgery, a third surgery in March of 2000 and. 12, um, to, to kind of take out the screws and, and clean it up and, um, did like a bone graft to just kind of heal the bone and, and kind of give the, the doctor a clean slate to work on. And then in October, end of October, 2012, had a fourth surgery and repaired my ACL and my LCL. Okay. Um, and so, so yeah. Three ACLs, four surgeries, um, and uh, and yeah, quite a quite a bit of rehab in between there as well. <laughs> yeah, what uh, what kinds of um, rehab and um, um, training, you know, exercises, that kind of thing, have they got you on um, right now? And what what have you found has been the most beneficial to to rehabbing your knee? Yeah, you know, I mean, I think that. Well, for me, uh, the whole rehab, I, I, I was fortunate to go through my whole college career, starting every game, never missed a game. I never really had a serious injury in, in sports ever, at least one that you couldn't kind of push through. You know, uh, and what I mean by that is that this, with the knee injury, it wasn't, it had nothing to do with a pain tolerance. You couldn't, you couldn't tough it out. You couldn't, uh, you know, go out there and just make it work. You had to, you had to give it time. And you had to, you had to let it heal, and that was something that I never really had to, to deal with. And so, uh, you know, so for for the past you know three years now, it's been a lot of just strengthening the muscles around the knee. So, strengthening the quad and strengthening the hamstring, doing the, the calf. You know, everything you can do to build up the muscles around the knee. And so, you know, for a majority of the rehab, it's it's really a lot of just you know, standard, you know, single leg lifts or, or, you know, box lifts or box jumps, you know, all straight forward and, and backward motions uh, to try and get that knee strength uh, back to where it needs to be, get it back to, to the, even to the right leg or, or even 
perhaps stronger at this point. Um, and then, you know, once we feel that the knee uh, is getting strong enough, then we start working on, um, we can start working on the, uh, we start progressing towards some lateral movements and start kind of incorporating some sideways jumps or sideways shuffles or things of that nature. And then continuing to progress with, with kind of an explosion uh, and working on exploding out. And then also, you know, the, the flip side to the explosion and accelerating out of the stance is the decelerating. And so really making sure that you can control your knee when you decelerate and you try and stop and start uh, as quickly as possible. And so, it, you know, it goes through a couple of phases of one, just building the muscle, two, beginning to incorporate lateral movements. And maybe that, that might even be part of the last phase is that lateral movement, but also working on that that explosion and, and the stop and start. And so it's... Uh, you know, it's been it's been a process. You know, it's it's you got to be patient with it. I've, I've tend to given a lot of advice out to, to friends or peers that have that are continuing or that are going through similar knee injuries. But uh, it's you know really uh, really just making sure that it's strong and ready to go. And uh, and with the strength is there, then you can start working on the explosion and and moving side to side. Every time I've torn my knee, it's been uh, it's been with a lateral cut. Ah. And so, and so that's where it's been. You know, we got to be careful there doing it, and just make sure that the that the muscles are ready. And so, so yeah, that's my long-winded answer. Hey, that's okay. That's that's gives a lot of uh, information to everybody, so they really understand what you've been going through, and uh, and it helps a lot to to for people to understand it. Um, you think your knee, with all the rehab that you're doing, you're going to be ready by the time the uh, season opens on April 26th. Yeah, the knee, uh, the knee feels good. The knee feels great. You know, it's, it feels the best that it's ever felt since since the first injury that I sustained. And so, it, uh, you know, I've I, I've definitely, you know, the, the first the furthest I'd ever made it out of a surgery without re-injuring it again was that first time was about seven months. And so, right now I'm at about you know a year and almost a year and a quarter. You know, a year and two months. And so I'm I'm by far you know, further than I've ever gotten in terms of not re-injuring it. Yeah. Which is, uh, which is good, which is nice. Um, so, you know, I think there's a couple of things. I think one with the surgery, I think repairing both ACL and the LCL, um, having that extra stability there has definitely helped. And I've noticed a difference there. And then two, uh, taking, taking my time and really rehabbing this knee and being able, being able to progress into, you know, start, Slowly doing some movements during last summer, during the during the 2013 season, and then uh, leading up to, to playing with DU, uh, playing with Outlaws against DU this this October was uh, you know that was a big step. That was that was nearly a year to the day. Um, you know, it was, it was one week short of a year to when I had my 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 last surgery, and so uh, being able to get through that game and 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 I felt pretty good. I was a little a little quicker than what I anticipated and. Um, you know, I felt good on the field. I think, you know, I need to continue to work on getting my wind back and, and making sure that I'm in, in the best shape, you know, I can be. Um, but, uh, sorry, I got a call coming in now. Um, but, um, just lost my train. So, uh, but yeah, but, but playing into you was, was definitely nice to, to get through that game and, and, and feel confident about where the knee stood and just, you know, from this forward, you know, continuing to obviously strengthen and strengthen the leg and, and, and not lose track of that, but, but the ability now to, to focus on full body movements and to, as opposed to, you know, for three years, really focusing on that, that left knee and strengthening that leg, you know, the ability now to, to do, to do full body exercises and run around and, and, and jump and, and do all these different activities, uh, you know, has definitely helped, you know, I'm, I'm actually, I'm, I'm snowboarding a bit, which, uh, which I haven't been able to do at all because my knee's been hurt. But I think that, you know, I'm being sensible doing that. I'm, no, I'm not doing anything crazy, but I think even that, being able to, to strengthen the knee and just continue working those muscles has been uh, has been nice. So, yeah, you know, I think I, I'm, I'm, the knee's definitely going to be ready for uh, for April. Um, and uh, and it's really now just getting back into getting my body back into shape and getting being able to, to run with these guys and, and make, the, uh, make the quick movements that I, that I need to. 
Okay. So now, how do you feel about uh, being drafted sixth amongst what I believe it was 90 players in the supplemental draft? It must feel pretty good to get uh, picked up so early in the uh, draft. Yeah, it, uh, it was amazing. You know, I mean, I've uh, you know I've been I've been you know I got drafted obviously by the Outlaws as as a rookie, and uh, you know to to have to have their support throughout this process to to, to you know I've been communicating with the coaches and talking to them and, and, and from the coaches and the players to know that they're, they're supporting me in the comeback and, and they, they want to see me succeed and, and have the trust, one, to draft me, let alone pick me up in the, in the first round was, was unbelievable. You know, I couldn't be any more thankful for them and, and I definitely want to, want to, want to prove to, to them and, and to the rest of the, to the cross community that, that it was the right choice, you know, that I, that, that, that uh, you know, that I can fulfill that, that uh, that draft pick, and you know, I'm I'm, I'm excited to prove that to them and, and make them know that you know, prove to them that they made made the right choice there. Yeah, because that was going to be my next question. Is uh, in all the articles that I've been reading, um, there's a lot of skepticism out there that the people think that the outlaws made a bad decision. Um, and I, on the other hand, I've I've seen you out there play, and uh, so and I know that you've got a lot of heart, and uh, you just you you'll bring a lot to the outlaws and so so what are your thoughts to their um their skepticism about what the outlaws did yeah you know i think uh i, I can't blame them you know i mean three acl tears four surgeries i think when people ask me if i'm still trying to play and i tell them yeah i'm, I'm coming back they kind of they kind of look at me like i'm crazy so you know for me mentally i've, I've kind of blurred all these together in my head it's it's been kind of one long injury for the past three years and I think I've been able to do that just uh, because they've they've happened so closely together because I've never really been able to get back into it since my first one um, so you know there, there's definitely times where I actually sit back and reflect on how long it's been or or how many surgeries I've had and and it's uh it's pretty wild to good, you know, to, to, to think about it, and uh, you know, so I, I can't blame people with skepticism. I think that if, if I'd like to think that I looked, uh, I looked, um, you know, I had some flashes of my old self in the DU game. It wasn't where I wanted to be or where I need to be, but I, I think that it was. It definitely I left feeling optimistic about where I stood, and uh, you know, I'd like to think that if people saw that, they might they might feel the same way, and so. You know, I've always, if people are going to, you know, I like the, the that, that, that motivates me. You know, I don't, I have no problem people saying that, that uh, they don't think it was a wise choice because I'm looking forward to, to proving them wrong. Oh, good. So, good. So what do you feel that you're going to uh, be able to do um, for the Outlaws on defense this season? Do you feel that... Um, with all of the uh, young players that have come in and some of the players that they've released, traded, um, what do you feel is going to be your, your biggest competition as far as another player on defense out there? You know, I mean, I think, I think that uh, from a playing standpoint, like we talked about earlier, I think that my ability to, to be able to play close or, or long stick um, is, you know, is, is a nice thing to have. You know, I think that, the, you know, if the team needs me to go somewhere and I can do that, I think that's definitely a, a, a positive feature. I think that, you know, I, the Outlaws have obviously picked up some 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 great defensemen um, like Simon, and and we got Roger back, and and you know we had a phenomenal season last year. You know, the team lost one game the whole season, and so you know to come in and, and crack a lineup is is going to be quite a quite a tough task to do. And so I think with that being said. You know, being injured all these three years, I think that the one thing I can absolutely say is that I've become a smarter player. You know, I know more about the game. I've learned a ton from coaching and, and still being involved and, and watching. Something I've never been able to do is just watch. And uh, and so I think whether, you know, I do end up cracking the lineup or getting on the field or not, uh, I know that I can help a lot of these younger guys. I know that I can I have some... Uh, you know, some knowledge now that I can share and that I'd be happy to share. You know, I think at the end of the day, I want to play, but, but more than anything, you know, I want to win a championship. And whatever I got to do, whether that's on the field or helping the guys that are playing be their best, you know, I'm happy to, I'm happy to do it. And so, 
I'm uh, I'm looking forward to the play, you know, to to the training camp. I'm looking forward to meeting uh, a lot of the new guys, and I'm looking forward to, to to joining with these older guys. And I think we've all got one plan or one goal, and that's that's to win. And uh, you know, whatever it takes to do that, I think I think we're all in for it. Yeah. Now, what uh, of all the uh, MLL teams, which team are you looking most forward to playing against? Um, you know, I think that. I think that both, well, I think Chesapeake is, is, is definitely a big one. You know, they've, they've won the last, you know, they won last year and they've, they've uh, won, what, the last three out of four or something, something like that. And so I think you always want to play, uh, you know, you want to beat the champion. You want to, you want to make a name for yourself. And, uh, and I think on, you know, I think that that, that program, you know, that, that the Bayhawks in particular have been, it's been, very successful the last couple of years. So playing them is going to be exciting. Uh, I think that both Chesapeake and Charlotte have uh, have a bunch of UVA guys on the team, and uh, and so playing against those guys after being teammates for for four years or spending you know being teammates period whether it was for four or one uh, playing against the UVA guys is always a blast. And so I've always enjoyed playing the teams that had a lot of those guys on it and. I remember when I was playing, Chesapeake had quite a few. I know they still do, and and it seems like Charlotte's picked up quite a few of the UVA guys as well. And so, anytime I get a chance to, to play those guys, it's, it's it's a lot of fun. Okay, so uh, what do you think with because I'm a, I'm an outlaw season ticket holder and amazing season last year. I mean, or in 2013, record breaker, all over the place. Um, what do you think they need to do to get past that first round? Because that's where it seems to always end is in the first round of the playoffs, which is um, tough for I'm sure the players and of course the fans as well. Um, you know, it's uh, I think it's tough to say. I mean, I I, I mean you, you couldn't have. I mean, you could. I mean, the, the season last year was just unbelievable. The guys. I mean, I was fortunate enough to be in the locker room and, and, and at all the home games and, and watching these guys play and seeing them practice and, and the, the effort, the, the, the focus, the drive, the determination. I honestly had never been, a, you know, that, that team was something special. I mean, it was the focus. I'd never seen a team that, that, that had more focus and for one game at a time and, and each game was just as important. And, uh, you know, it was really – it was really heartbreaking to see the loss. You know, I wasn't I wasn't in Philadelphia, but was watching it, and and it wasn't it wasn't them losing that w- was heartbreaking. It was just uh, the fact that I knew how much they put in and how much they uh, how much it meant to those guys, and um, and to see them up, see them come up short was 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 tough to see. Yeah. You know? So I you know I, I would be uh, if we could have another rock room and another team like we did last year. I mean, I'll take that any day. You know, the, the, the result wasn't what we wanted, and we all knew that. We want to win. You know, that's the ultimate goal. But, uh, but you know, that, that group of guys, I'd take them up against anyone, anytime. And, you know, I think we continue to focus, continue building upon what, what they did last year, what we did last year, uh, you know, one game at a time, continuing to build, play as a team, and, uh, and, and hopefully, you know, things come together when they need to. Um, but... That was, you know, I've got, I don't think there's, uh, I can't say anything negative about those, that, that group. I mean, that was, that season was just unbelievable and just didn't, didn't go the way that, that we had hoped. Yeah. It, there. Yeah, it was, it was, uh, the, the, just the players in general, just, it was just magic. I mean, there was, it was a fun season to watch and, uh, and I enjoyed every single game. Uh, but just so many records broken, and MLL and Outlaws, and it was uh, it was great. So, yeah. is is there anything else you'd like to say about coming back to the Outlaws? Um, what you're looking forward to, that kind of thing. Um, you know, I mean, I think the you know, kind of just going off of what we were just talking about about winning. You know, I I knew that uh, you know that when I went into the supplemental draft this. This, this year, that obviously there's no guarantees on where you're going to land or if you're going to get picked up at all. Um, but the one thing that I knew was that I wanted to be an outlaw and that I didn't want to be competing with 
there's there's no other team I'd rather compete with to go win a championship. And uh, you know, to be back on that loss, to have that goal in place, you know, it's the same goal that that uh, unfortunately, I guess, but it is the same goal that we've had in place since I was drafted as a rookie. And so to be back on this team with that goal in mind to go win a championship, you know, I can't wait to get back in the locker room, get on the field with that group of guys and, and, and make that happen in 2014. It's going to be a great year for the team. And, uh, you know, I'm looking forward to, to bringing home the Steinfeld Cup to, to Denver. Oh, well, I appreciate all of your um, honesty and the answers to all your questions and going into so much depth about uh, your injuries, your love of the sport, everything. I really appreciate appreciate you taking the time to uh, do this interview with me, Ken. Yeah, guys, no problem. Yeah, sorry again, not getting back to you. Hey, <laughs> nope, but, uh... not a problem. I appreciate that you even took the time to, uh, um, in this busy right now time of year with Christmas coming up, to uh, give me a little bit of your time to... Um, Ask, answer some of my questions. Yeah, no problem. All right. Well, I hope you have a great holiday and start to the new year, and I look forward to seeing you at the at Outlaws game. Oh, you will. I'm right there behind the Outlaws bench, and hopefully I will be down on the field getting to take pictures of you guys and doing some interviews too. Great. So, Sounds good. All right. Merry Christmas, Ken. Thanks. Merry okay. Christmas. All right. Bye-bye. All right. Bye.